Hello everyone. Hope everybody is having a terrific weekend. So, um, I know I've been conspicuously absent for a few days. Um, yeah, there's been, you know, all kinds of stuff happening, but I'm back now. And, um, I wanted to show the progress that I've, <laughs> I've had for DP along with friends, wings and things, um, hosted by Eileen over at Diamond Crafts by Eileen. Um, I'm doing Light Weaver along with Donna at Diamond Art Joy, who I'm sure has, is close to completion, if not completed by now. And I've managed to do this whole square right here. <laughs> I knew at the time that I agreed to do it, it was going to be a multi-whip um, kind of a thing. So, or multi-month kind of a whip. So that's okay. Um, it could take as long as it needs to. I have quite a few large whips going. Um, so I'm okay with it taking a while. And like I said, I haven't been able to really um, do much diamond painting because things have been, oh, let's call them complicated for this last few days. Um, but I am enjoying this painting very much. It's really a fun one to do. I'm going to turn you for a second. Don't get seasick on me. Okay. I'm going to be working in this section right here. So I'm going to move the camera up onto the canvas a little bit so that you can see me while I'm working. I'm using this beautiful Dragon Eye, uh, cover minder that Ray from Sugar Ray Crafts sent me. She sent me several and ooh, am I loving it? Oh, you don't even know. Anyway, so, so I've completed this square. We're working on this one and um, we will get on with it. Um, just a one brief moment. I, <laughs> I have one of those needy chihuahua moments happening. So as soon as he gets a little underway. Um, so in the meantime, uh, I'm going to show you a couple other things I've been working on. So you will see, this is my Blissful and Blue that I'm doing for Diamonds by Tita's Blissful and Blue event for April. Uh, you can see two sections on this one. <laughs> um, again, it's a time deficit, you guys. I just don't have the time to diamond paint that I wish I had. But uh, again, really enjoying this canvas. Um, I did make some substitutions of ABs for some of the regular drills that were charted. And I'll talk to you more of that when I do a completion on this one because I have some things that I think that I wanna let the newbies know about. Um, as this goes into completion, we'll talk more. So yeah, so there's that one. And then of course, my ever so lovely colorful dragon canvas which I am enjoying the bejesus out of. I really am, you guys. This has been so much fun. I've done two full rows. Again, this one had strategic numbers replaced with ABs. I was a little concerned that after I did the very first panel, which was down here in the corner, I was a little concerned that they might, I might have done too many ABs, you know, replaced them or I may have done too many that are next to each other, therefore resulting in globs of huge sparkle and then regular sparkle, which try not to do that. If you're gonna replace drills, try to kind of even out the colors that you're replacing. Now, some of it's gonna depend on what colors do you have in your AB stash, and some of it's gonna be your personal preference. What parts of it do you wanna see come to life? So, I mean, it's all up to you. But now that this whole piece is done, I'm okay with it. I think it's coming along fine. So much fun. Um, heavy, heavy, heavy confetti. I, for some reason, unbeknownst to me, I seem to select those kinds of canvases and that's okay. I like confetti, but boy, when there is so much confetti, like, okay, if you, I'm gonna bring this in closer. If you look at this flower, There are several colors represented in here. I mean, several, even in the background area. Do you see how many colors? 
are represented in here. You don't notice that when it's far away, which is which is nice. You can just see that it you know, looks like a you know looks like a canvas should when it's completed. But yeah, this has had confetti everywhere. Even the dragon has five or six different colors that represent his skin tone. So yeah. <laughs> It's been so much, you guys, but beautiful and so much fun to work on. And then, don't worry, I don't want to let you guys down. I did have a completion. I completed the partial. Ta -da! So, yeah. I completed this partial. I loved working on it. It's so beautiful and so much fun. Um, it took a few days, not terrible amounts of time. It came together fairly quickly. Um, one of the things that I I dearly loved about it is I love how the outline was in white ABs. There's a lot of that even out you know around here. Um, and I love the special drills because they were really fun to use as well. Um, the only bummer with this one was the color I had the most of. This one had 11 total drills, okay? It's seven actual colors and then special drills for the other four colors. But the one that had the most color, which was this dark blue that you can kind of see sort of spread around, that was the only one that had terrible quality drills. I mean, they just were really bad. I ended up having to use a lot of trash drills, which I did not want to do and I wasn't happy about it. But so many of them were damaged. I don't know why. I don't know why that particular color and I don't know, you know, what was happening with that, that, that so many of them were chipped and broken and missing the back piece that makes them reflective, the little silver backing. So, I mean, I just was, yeah, I mean, it was disappointing. All of the other colors, I mean, they had some trash and we know when you're dealing with crystal drills, you tend to get that. But at least all of the other colors, you know, were majority were okay so I didn't have to worry but yeah and that took me a little bit of extra time too because I had to really sift through the dark blue ones but um I'm pleased with how it came out and I think she's really beautiful so yeah she's in my need to get around to sealing it stack <laughs> which is growing so plus my husband's adding his need to be sealed to my stack I don't know what that's about but I can guess anyway so yeah there she is so that was, oh, that was such a fun one to do. And I love these special drills, these long slender little sliver looking ones and the little pink ones that are very reflective. It's just so pretty. And even the iridescent little half circles are just beautiful. So yeah, I finished the partial. So all is not lost. <laughs> um, and I, I am enjoying all of the whips. I also still have Dragonheart. Um, that one is uh, in my room. And so when I can no longer tolerate sitting in a chair out here, I can go in there and, and get that ready to go. So, okay. Whoops, hang on people. So that's what's been happening. Um, so, all right, let me get this ready to go. I'm gonna bring you down in here a little bit closer. Hopefully that might not even be close enough. I'll have to see. <sighs> The bane of my existence is filming angles. Anyway, so, um, so what has happened? Okay, so, um, so Thursday night, I get a call around 10.30 at night from the hospital where the doctor tells me that Lisa has developed a bleed in her lungs. And I know I wasn't gonna give you an update, but this will be the last one, I promise. And they were doing a procedure at her bedside, trying to staunch the bleeding, but because her lungs were so compromised from the pneumonia, they were having a really difficult time and the doctor wanted me to be prepared that she did not think it was going to be effective. Um, so I thanked her for letting me know. I asked her, please to let me know if, uh, you know, what the outcome ultimately was. 
Um, hung up with her. Again, it was about, you know, 10.30, 10.35, 10.40 at that point. And, um, you know, was very upset and all of that. And so, you know, I talked to my husband about it. And then, um, the doctor called me back at about, I don't know, 11.25, 11.30, letting me know the time of death was 11.10 p.m. on Thursday. So, yeah. So, yeah, it was the worst possible outcome. I mean, not that it was completely unexpected. I mean, you know, we know that she's been struggling for a long time. I mean, she fought as hard as she possibly could. I mean, 10 months of hell is what she went through. So, yeah. So that's what happened. She did pass. But the hardest part, I think, was calling her stepson and having to let him know what happened. Fortunately, he did come out and visit with her um, the weekend before she passed. Um, and I'm so grateful he did that because, I, you know, I, I encouraged him to come as quickly as he could because I, I knew that this was a possibility. And I knew that for all they were trying to do to treat the pneumonia and to treat the sepsis, and you know try to see what neurology was left after the brain bleed i mean we knew this was not going to be good so i called him and i said you know henry i really need you to prioritize this because things are not going well she's really struggling and i need you to get um to get out here because he lives in washington state so you know and last minute flights as as many of you know, and some of you will probably suspect, are terrible pricing. I mean, they just are terrible. And it was. And he did come out. So he stayed with her for the whole weekend, stayed overnight, left on Monday. And then she passed on Thursday. So, um, but I'm worried about his sobriety because he's been clean and sober for 10 years. And... You know, I, and he mentioned that he really hasn't wanted to use, but he just, he really did. And I said, you know what? I said, Henry, I don't care if you have to go to a meeting. I don't care if you have to call a sponsor. You can call me anytime, day or night. You can call her friend in San Jose, it, it, whatever you need to do. But I said, she was so proud of you when you made it out of rehab and you never had to go back that you cannot, cannot let your sobriety go now because that that would be an impossible thing for her she couldn't she wouldn't be able to stand it if she knew so you have to do whatever it takes so so far so good i mean he has he has been calling and talking and he has a friend staying with him which i thought was a great idea but yesterday um he texted me in the morning. I texted him back. Um, <clears throat> and then I texted Merlinda because he stopped texting just kind of all of a sudden. And I said, have you heard anything from, from him? And she's like, no. In fact, I texted him this morning to say, hey, how are you feeling? And I didn't get a response. And I said, well, he was talking to me and then all of a sudden he's gone. So... I hope he just needed a breather and a cup of coffee. That's what I'm really hoping. But as of right now, <clears throat> we're all concerned. So that's been really awful. And now I'm just trying to, you know, navigate, you know, being in this crappy world without my best friend. Because I really took it for granted that, you know, at any time, Literally, any time. I could just call her. If I hadn't talked to her in two years, I could call her and say, I need to vent. And she'd go, hang on, let me turn off the TV. Okay, go, girl. And then we would just deal with whatever it was. 
and I knew how lucky I was to have that, but... Hey, enough! But, um, also took it a little for granted, because I, you know, she's six months younger than I am, so I never expected that I would be in this world without her. So... That is why I've been gone, away from the channel for a while. Um, yeah, it was it was really a bummer. And now, I couldn't believe it. Less than 12 hours after this all happened, I get a voicemail from somebody at Decedent Services at the hospital. You know, call me as soon as you can. And I thought, you know what? You can just wait. She's in your morgue on ice. She's not going anywhere. You can just bite me because I'll get back to you when it's good for the rest of us, not you. So um, I need to get a hold of Henry because I don't know. We've The three of us have talked about, could, you know, maybe we could go in thirds and pay for her cremation. Um, we're getting flack from the cemetery where her parents are buried. They're saying... Oh, sorry, yeah, there's no room. You'll need a whole new plot. I mean, it's just a whole bunch of crap. So, um, so I want to know if Henry's still in on that. If not, then I'm going to have to let the decedent services person know that you're going to have to consider her indigent and, um, you know, figure out how to get the cremation done. And then I will pick up her remains and figure out how I'm going to get them back up to Northern California. But I, again... I'm going to have to leave it up to her friend up there to figure out <laughs> how and where she's going to be interred. But first things first. So, um, that's all happening. So, <clears throat> but I really wanted to thank you guys because I really cannot tell you how much your support and your comments meant to both of us she was coherent long enough to know that everybody was out there really rooting for her so thank you for that and now the world is a much worse place without her in it so be careful out there because oh, there's one less good guy and a whole lot more bad guys so that's that. <clears throat> um, and again, like I said, that will be the last time that I bring it up. So, <sighs> enough of the depression and the whole crap. Okay, now, um, other things. Okay, so my husband and I finally got to go <laughs> to see the show last night with Christopher Titus. Um, it was fun being part of the filming. When it, when it comes out, whether it's on streaming or DVD, you guys should get it. It's called Carrying Monsters. And he's basically talking about <laughs> um, his family when he was growing up and what that looked like and how things are or were, you know, how things were done, how he ended up back and forth between his parents. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you guys need to, to really see that if you get a chance because, oh man, we really laughed and it felt good to laugh after the week we'd had. So, yes, totally hilarious. Um, traffic was awful driving into LA. We literally, we counted them. <clears throat> good thing we left is that we left two and a half hours early and it turned out to be a good thing because on the major freeway that we take to get from here to there, which is <clears throat> 101, there were literally three accidents, three separate accidents. And I thought, you know, what is it about people on Friday and Saturday nights that they just cannot figure out how to drive home safely? Like they do it the rest of the week. What is the problem? Um, now, as you know, we see th that a lot on like 
you know, holidays because people are in from out of town and they don't understand the nuances of having to drive in California traffic. So we often see accidents that happen East, you know, over spring break and over winter break and summer vacation and, you know, all of that is, is not uncommon. But it's like, no, these were all California plates. So I'm just like, okay, whose head wasn't in the car today? So I always think it's such a bummer because it's like, what a terrible way to start your weekend. Well, I was coming home from work and then I got in a major accident and spent, you know, the next week in the hospital. Like, really? Come on, guys. <sighs> let's just not insist on the right of way to our own deficit. Okay, let's just not do that. Um, so yeah, it delayed us. I mean, what should have taken 90 minutes took us like two hours and 20 minutes. But we did get there. And so, <clears throat> and we dressed, you know, fairly nice. Well, <laughs> as is often the case in the Los Angeles area, we had to park in public parking. Now, let me tell you about public parking. <laughs> oh, you're lucky if you get one that's a parking garage where it's covered parking. Most of the time, no. Most of the time, it's empty lots that have a fence around them as close as possible to the venue. Okay. So this particular <laughs> parking area was a lot, but... Um, and it wasn't too far. It was kind of like across the street and down, you know, less than half a block. So it wasn't bad. $15 to park. Okay. So we park and it's pouring rain. I mean, it has poured rain. It poured rain all day yesterday. It's still raining, although not as hard, but it's still raining. Um, and so here we are, we're dressed up. My poor husband, he gets my scooter out of the car. And then I put up the placard for him while he's doing that and finish with my makeup. And then he comes back. I said, I already put the placard up. He said, oh, thanks. And then he got his cane and I get on my scooter. And now the two of us drenched beyond recognition are walking from this parking area, this vacant lot, to the theater where it was being filmed. Okay. So we go down there and we we go into the to the building and we get there and we had probably 20 minutes because it was supposed to start at seven so we we get over to the desk and we show him our confirmation number he um gives us some tickets now my husband says to him, and I was standing right there when he did it, my husband says to him, as if you couldn't tell by looking at us, right? Here I go rolling in in my scooter. Seriously, guys, my plan, I'm gonna paint flames on the side. I just haven't done it yet. Okay, so I go rolling in on my scooter and he's using a cane. So as he's giving us, um, uh, our t you know, our seat assignment, my husband says, um, you know, if, if you could, I mean, we're, you know, we're handicapped. So if you could please give us seats that, you know, we can maneuver in and out of, that would be great. So he's like, just tell the house manager when you go in. We're like, okay. So we decided we better use the restroom. It was a long ride. So we... We go over to the to the one restroom that's downstairs, okay, in the theater. And it says, please, you know, leave this restroom for our patrons that cannot go upstairs. Because this is an old theater. It's an old stage theater. And you, there's no, you know, there's no elevator access. It's stairs and that's it. So I thought it was really nice that they wanted to leave ground level restroom for those of us that, you know, I can't very well take my scooter upstairs, right? Okay. So I 
get in line. My husband gets in line behind me. There's nobody there, but I tried the door. The door was locked. Okay. So we wait and we wait and we wait. And who comes out of the restroom? Some dude drinking a beer who was perfectly fine and could have gone upstairs. I think the way we glared at him probably sent the message. Not that he cared, but, you know, felt good to glare anyway. Okay, so I go in. My husband goes in. Um, and I'm waiting in the lobby for him to come out. He comes out. And I told him, you know, bring extra paper towels because my scooter was, was soaked. And, I, you know, guys, I'm talking about soaked. I mean, we walked in the rain to get over to the theater. So, he did, so I could clean up some of the water, waterlogged issue. And while I was waiting, I noticed on the wall that they had some paintings from a local artist, uh, which was really fun. Acrylic paints, type paintings, beautiful work. She does amazing stuff. I thought, ooh, I'd love to take some of these and put them in my purse and go have diamond paintings made out of them. She had a bunch of them that had owls in various times of day and various poses. And then she had some that were gnomes that, you know, I thought of my other, my other friend that's out of state that loves those kind of things. And I thought, man, so I saw a lady come over and get her cell phone out and take some pictures of it. And I thought, well, I don't know if you're allowed to do that, but she's doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. So I tried to get some pictures of it, but yeah, I was, so I was using my time, you know, constructively while I waited for him. He finally comes out and gives me the paper towels. You know, he and I both work on the scooter and, you know, dry it off. And then we decide we're going to go in and get into our seats and get ready because now it's like 10 minutes to showtime. All right, it's 10 minutes to 7. Okay, so we... <laughs> We go and there's the house manager standing there so we give him our tickets and he goes okay these seats are not handicap accessible and we looked at him we looked at each other and we looked at him and we said well you know it's not like he couldn't see us when we came in plus we brought it to his attention and he said to talk to the house manager about it would that be you he goes oh okay he goes well come this way okay so he takes us um, an alternate way, kind of to the side, and we follow him. And you guys, it was really cool. We ended up sitting next to the cinematographer that was recording the special. <laughs> we had beautiful, beautiful scenery. We got to, we got to, you know, our, the visual field was amazing. So we got, it, it felt like front row seats because, I mean, you know, you have to have non-obstructive area so that when you're filming something that's going to be, you know, posted somewhere, um, whether that's on streaming or DVD or whatever, you have to have clear access to your subject matter. So we really did. So yeah, we had beautiful seats. Now, we sat down and it was five minutes to seven. We were very pleased with ourselves. We thought, oh good, we're not gonna have to, you know, sit here because we hadn't <laughs> had time to eat because we had planned to eat but we didn't expect that there were going to be so many accidents and it was going to delay us so much so we decided well we're going to have to do the best we can and you know eat later so we had water with us which I put in the basket of my scooter so that we could stay hydrated but um you know I didn't know how long our blood sugar was going to make it and so we both wear a sensor. So I said, you know what? Check your blood sugar. So he did. And he goes, 140. I said, okay, good. Mine is 100. So we got a couple of hours. And then we're going to have to eat before we go back. He goes, yep, sounds like a plan. I said, okay. So it all worked out fine. We didn't pass out. Everything was good. And uh, you guys, we laughed for two hours. It was so funny. I mean, I think anybody, you know, anybody that has a family can relate. I mean, you know, or if you've ever had a family, it's, you know, you can totally relate. And it was absolutely so much fun and so worth going. And we really enjoyed it. This was actually 
the second time that we've seen him live, um, the first time was, oh gosh, I don't know, I want to say seven or eight years ago. But it was wonderful then too, but this was so much better. I think he was really on his mark because, you know, it is, it was a taping of a special. And they said, you know, be sure you laugh really, really loud. And, you know, clap as much as you want because, yeah, you guys are going to be on the soundtrack. So, and of course, there was whoop whoop happening from the audience. And not a few people, you know, had hit the bar before we went in. There's a bar at the, in, right next to, the, adjacent to the lobby of the theater. We got there too late to really get anything. But, um, you know, several people had been there uh, apparently long enough to get a couple of things. So, yeah, there were a couple of people that were feeling no pain, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, it was all good. And he he's very well rehearsed now because he's been touring with this particular show. This is his, and they told us, this is his 10th special and which is kind of awesome i think we have the dvds of three four five six seven of them so <laughs> yeah um so we've been enjoying him for a number of years so i mean he could be a little edgy but when you when you discover what his upbringing was like and what his family was like it, hey edgy is the least of his problems but it was really wonderful he did an excellent job um his wife comes out first who's also a comedian her name is uh, rachel bradley um she has a special out shoot i don't remember which streaming service has it called alpha chick um and she's also hilarious um she said that she starts out telling you that, you know, she, her dad was in the military and her mother was a hippie. So she said, yes, you know, I was raised by Rambo and Rainbow. <laughs> so yeah, she's, she's very funny. If you have a chance to see it, you should. Um, but she came out to sort of give us, you know, the housekeeping information and what was going to be happening and where the restrooms were and da 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 da. So and uh, yeah, told us enjoy the show. And we did very, very much. Everybody clapped. I mean, it was really, it was a great crowd. I mean, it was, and they thanked us for coming and, you know, yeah. And they had been, you know, touring all over, including they went to Scotland, which was an interesting place to go to do this kind of a special because I don't know, it seems like Scotland, you know, the family makeups are maybe a little bit different or, culturally they're different or I, I don't know exactly but <laughs> they were as appalled as we were about a lot of things but you know we got to the laugh because we appreciated the punchline that he put with all this stuff I'm not sure they did but anyway <laughs> but it was fun they said they were treated well and that they enjoyed going over there and the whole so yeah you know it was nice to see them and everybody was well and you know um it was a good time, and it went very fast. I'd like to have stayed for the, the late show, too, but no. We only had tickets for the early show. So, we got out of there. We ended up cruising down in uh, downtown L.A., trying to find a drive through that was open by the time we came out, because it was about... Well, we got to the car probably 9.20 because we had to, you know, everybody leaves at once. And that was fine. And we were able to, you know, walk with a crowd of people because uh, we all left the theater at the same time. So that's good. That's what I was hoping would happen. So we got back to our car fine. Um, took my husband um, a few minutes to load up the scooter. And I took his cane for him and put it in the car. Um, and... We only had one panhandler while we were there, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, so we said, sorry, no cash. Um, so he left us alone. And, well, really, the I don't know if he was going to or not, but the, the people that were running the parking lot 
um, came over and basically told him, you need to go, get out of here. And so he did. Um, and then everyone else, um, you know, just fine, either st stayed to themselves. Um, a couple people offered, you know, to help us. I wanted to know, if, did we need help loading anything up, which was very sweet. You know, I love it when people do that. I mean, I we don't need help, but we always thank them because, you know, and I will say, you know, what hurts my heart is it happens so much less frequently than it used to even 10 years ago. So that makes me sad because, I don't know, it just says something about our society um, and the way that we've decided to treat each other. Um, it's just really unfortunate, but there's still a few. There are still a few good people out there in the world. Um, and so, um, and it was still, you know, with the one panhandler, and I think there were three people that offered to help us. So I figure that's three to one, the good guys over the bad guys. So I'll, I'll take it. That still means that there's, you know, two thirds of us are still out there trying to help each other get through this world. So that actually made me feel better too. Um, but yeah, and I was thinking about Lisa a lot because I thought she would have loved this special. She would be there just, just laughing and going and, you know, um, so that was a bummer. But yeah, the show was very good. So again, it's called Carrying Monsters. If you get a chance to see it. And it's Christopher Titus, T-I-T-U-S. He does have some specials on YouTube. Full, I mean like full-time specials. Like an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. You will not believe how fast it goes. Um, the very first one I think that came out. I mean, and yes, he's the guy that used to have the show on TV. That whole thing. Um... I think the first one is called Norman Rockwell is Bleeding, and that's his first special, but <clears throat> then he has one where he's talking about his divorce and his custody battle and meeting his, his, this, his second wife, the wife he has now, um, called Love is Evil, E-V-O-L. So, <clears throat> again, if you get an opportunity to see any of his specials, you absolutely should. <clears throat> There's one called The Angry Pursuit of Happiness, which is really funny, too. And uh, Neverlution, which absolutely cracked me up. So, yeah. Um, you know, but you get a chance, watch them, because, uh, you know, you're going to get a chuckle. And um, probably shake your head a little, but that's okay. Anyhow, so that was a lot of fun. Um, we got home little after 11 last night and um, up a couple of hours after that. So somewhere around one o'clock this morning, we finally fizzled into sleep. So yeah, that was how the evening went, but it was, it was really good to get away and have a reason to laugh. So we did. So yeah. Um, what else is happening? What's happening with you guys? Um, how's everybody doing that's participating in events? How you going on there? I know I'm fully behind in everything, but you know what? I'm taking the pass. So there you go. Um, I will tell you that little Miss Clara <laughs> is doing phenomenally well. She's just growing in leaps and bounds. She has already put on 23 grams. Um, which is pretty good when you consider that she was 45 grams. So that's, you know, another half body weight. So yeah, she's doing very well. She went four days, no seizures, which was amazing. So, you know, which leads me to believe there might be a, a nutritional component. Um, and you know, now that she's eating three times a day, like she needed to, yeah, she's just growing and scarfing her food and growing and getting better about being picked up, although that's still not a comfortable thing for her, but she's coming along, you know. If I had gotten her 
when she was a hatchling instead of a juvenile, you know, she was two months old instead of six months old. Um, you know, I would have been training her all along and she would have been comfortable a long time ago, but that's okay. We'll get there. It's just going to take a minute. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, if I, and I did do a little bit of video today while I was feeding her breakfast. So if I remember to do it, I will tack it on here. So those of you that would like to see how she's doing now, um, we'll be able to do that. But yeah, she's, and remember, I'm trying to video with one hand as I'm feeding her and stuff. So just know that, uh, yeah, Spielberg, I'm not. Okay. Um, so, or whoever the cinematographers are of this world. So yeah. Uh, but you'll, you get a chance to see her and yeah, she eats with gusto and she's doing very well. She's starting to shed, which is wonderful. That means that her body understands that she's growing, which is important. Sometimes, you know, when you have neurological issues, uh, you can run into problems with that because, you know, depending on how severe the issue is, sometimes it's hard for their bodies to realize to do the normal things that they should do. So that means occasionally you get stuck shed because it doesn't complete the shed cycle. And then you have to help them take that off, which can be, can be stressful. And I do not recommend it if you don't know what you're doing because you can really hurt them. You can hurt their skin and scales underneath the, the new ones that are forming if you do it too soon or if you're too overzealous about it and you accidentally hurt them. Uh, not to mention, you know, it's painful. Well, you know, if you've ever had a sunburn, and you're peeling away at it and all of a sudden you get a piece of tender skin you go ooh okay it's the same thing so you have to be you have to be careful you can't force anything because you don't want to hurt them because if you hurt them next time they're in trouble and they need help you're going to you're going to you can forget trying to get them to let you pick them up so yeah all of that you know is something that can occur um if they get messed up uh in how they're their little bodies and their cycles are supposed to work. Now, um, why she wasn't growing very well for her original owner, I'm not quite sure. I suspect that she might have only been feeding her once a day because um, she worked and all of that. And, you know, that's what you do with, with adult dragons. Or she might have fed her, you know, once in the morning and once in the afternoon or something. Um... And that's okay, or she might have just given her, you know, greens to eat while she was gone and then fed her protein when she was home. Um, but the only problem is, with the juveniles, um, they need to eat, initially they need to eat usually three times a day. By the time that they're her age, you know, if she was doing that now, that would be okay. Because if you were only giving it to her twice a day, because she's older. And, you know, and then by the time she's nine to 12 months old and almost fully grown, then, you know, you back it up to once a day and then that's where they stay. But, you know, the, the baby's got to have that protein as often as they can because they're growing so fast. Their rate of growth is insane because they are, you know, born to full grown in a year. So you realize in 12 months, they do what we do in 18 years, right? So it's really important that they have that. But, you know, if you're not there, if you have to work eight hours a day and whatever, however long it takes you to commute home, then you don't have the option. So you can only do what you can do. Um, so, but she did the right thing by her. She, you know, realized that she was going to need and continued to need more um, help than she was going to be able to could provide to her, especially with 26 other dragon babies. Um, so she rehomed her to someone that could, um, it's really kind of all you can do now, you know, she, and she's, she's been very, very sweet. I mean, she does a little bit of posturing because it's a fear reaction in the little ones, you know, they don't know why that you should, I mean, it'd be like a giant coming at you with their hand and picking you up. I mean, you might be a little unnerved by that too. Oh, there's one I forgot. So, you know, it's, that's just how it looks. Um, so, you know, you do what you can do. 
So it's just a matter of continuing to work with her until she's comfortable with somebody reaching for her. Um, it's one of the reasons why I only will have front opening enclosures for my dragons. Because sometimes people inadvertently freak them out, not realizing what they're doing. A lot of people don't understand. It's better if you don't use um, refurbished fish tanks or any kind of a tank that has a top opening. Because remember, one of their biggest predators is birds of prey. And they always come at them over their head. So you don't want to come at them over their head because they will instinctually try to flee from you because, you know, they know that that's a danger for them. So you're making it harder for them and for yourself if you don't understand or realize that you need to not come at them over their head all the time. So when you have a terrarium that opens, you know, has doors that do like French doors where it opens this way and you reach in, you're not coming at them over their head, and then you have a fighting chance. It still depends on, you know, again, how zealous are you about doing this? Because if you can't, if you don't have the patience, um, reptiles are not for you. So I had to learn patience. I do not have it innately, uh, but I've learned to have some <clears throat> because um, they're such wonderful little pets, and they're such great little beings, and so loyal and, and they show affection and they're just wonderful little creatures you don't have to walk them if the weather's bad like you know none of that has to happen so yeah um i was able to you know start working with her a little bit and i talked to her you know very quietly I've started singing to her. She finds that fascinating. They usually do because they're, they don't have the vocal cords and voices like we do. They can't really do much except hiss. So they find it fascinating what we can do with our voice. So if I need her to stop moving or I need to distract her for a minute, I'll just sing a couple bars of whatever your favorite song is and voila, she stops to listen and I can do what I need to do. and. And then by the time she realizes I've picked her up, even though she wants to panic, she also realizes I'm not hurting her. So she'll get there. It's just, you know, we're on a learning curve and that's okay. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, she is coming along really well. I'm really delighted to see how much less she's doing with her seizures. She did have one yesterday. Um, which was frustrating, and I thought, oh, dang it, because we were on a roll. I mean, she'd had four days without one, and I thought, yay, maybe we're we're figuring it out, but, yeah, she had one yesterday. So far today, she's been fine. She's got a full tummy, and she's a little basking her heart out, so she's very happy right now. Merlin, however, is being Merlin. He's mad because I had to take out his hide to wash it because he pooped on it, and so it's in the sink soaking and he's not pleased. And I'm like, hey, dude, you're the one that pooped on it. What, what do you want me to tell you? Maybe don't do that and then we don't have to take it out of your house. But he'll be fine. <clears throat> so everybody had a special treat today. Everybody had hornworms. So everybody's happy. Tummies are full. Life is good. So, yeah. So what else can I tell you? Oh, I'll tell you one thing, you guys. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> so here I am scrolling Amazon, right? And I'm just looking to see kind of, you know, what's out there. You know, what can I look? I found a six-pack of dragon canvases, you guys. I know. And not only did I find a six-pack of dragon canvases, but would you believe I didn't have any of them? I mean, you guys know, I mean, I have a jillion dragon canvases, and yet, nope, none of them. I was like, holy smokes. So, yeah, put that in my cart, you betcha. So, they had a four-pack, too, and they were different also, but I only really liked two out of four, and I'm like, well, I don't know if I want to pay $19.99 to get four of them when I really only like two of them. 
but the six pack was only five dollars more so it was $24.99 and I liked all of them and I didn't have any of them so I went with the six pack and um, another thing I want you guys to know is if any of you are in need of a light pad either you haven't gotten one yet or you need to replace yours I actually need to replace mine because I don't know why but it's flickering uh, randomly so that's been annoying I've replaced the cord twice it's still doing it so um, I went to look and right now they have the one that's um, a little over or a little under 13 inches by a little over a little under nine inches so you know copy paper size eight and a half by eleven twelve ninety nine Yes, $12.99. I kid you not. That's how much it is. So I said, well, let me just throw one of those in there too. So I did. <clears throat> so yeah, if you haven't been over to Amazon for a while, um, you know, get over there. Because I think there's, there's some, they've got some new diamond paintings in. They've got some packs of paintings like I was looking at. And then they have, um, in fact, I saw... Uh, Liz over at Liz Crafts Diamond Painting. She just got one that had little animals in it. A whole pack of 30 by 40s. I think there are 20 of them that she just got from Amazon. Um, somebody else, was it Tita? Might have been Teresa over at Diamonds by Tita. She, if it was her, she got, um, uh, I think, I think it's 12 also of uh, cam canvases that had um, scenery in it, all different scenery. So yeah, it's worth, it's worth checking over there periodically because new things come in, other things go on sale, you know, I mean, that's how I ended up getting my 12 Disney canvases for like 17 bucks. So yeah. Also, I don't know if you guys have seen it, if any of you have been on Timu lately, but Timu is advertising that they got licensing permission from Disney to give Disney products. I don't know, but that's what they're saying. And so if you've been waiting for a Disney canvas, oh my gosh, I just got Maleficent over there that um, Angela at DP Creepy Cuties just showed on her channel. Oh, she's awesome. And I got it on a flash sale, so I actually got it free because I had gotten three others of different things. And so, yeah, I put it in my cart and I paid zero dollars and zero cents. So, but they do have some really cool ones. A lot of Winnie the Pooh. Um, a lot of Mickey and Minnie. So, yeah, if you've been itching to buy uh, a Disney canvas and it's been a budgeting thing, um, go look at Timu because I'm pretty sure you're going to find some. And again, they're saying that they now have permission. I mean, it's kind of a bold thing to say if it's not true. I don't know. <clears throat> but, um, you know what? Go look and see for yourself. See what you think. So, yeah, that was my experience over there. Um, I was so frustrated because all of my whips are really large whips, like I was explaining earlier, <laughs> that... I got a, an email from GBFKE that they had a special, you know, a sale going. Uh, so, yeah, I got a GBFKE haul to show you guys when it arrives. Although, I will tell you, here's the kicker. You're not going to believe it, but it's true. Not a single dragon in the entire haul. I know. Makes you think I was ill, doesn't it? But I'm telling you, they have some adorable things and they had some really fun things and they had some creepy things and you know I just you know ordered five or six uh anyway so <laughs> I think it's worth going in and checking out some of the budget companies you know the first quarter of the year is gone so everybody's accounting numbers are in so they're you know people are going oh man we need to change some stuff up we need to have some sales, we need, you know, all this kind of stuff. So it's worth looking at some of these companies because I think you're going to find that you can get some pretty decent prices. Okay, now let's talk for a minute about the 
the premium companies. So, I don't know if you guys looked, but oh, Diamond Art Club has a very cool dragon head canvas that, oh, that Wendy just loved. But, per usual, uh, square drills. I looked at all of their new releases and there were several. Do you know only three of them total were round drills? All the rest were squares. And I was like, well, that saved me a bunch of money. Thanks, Diamond Art Club. And I went over to Dreamer Designs because they've got beautiful canvases and I just love them. They're actually probably my favorite of the premium companies. Um, and so they had some pretty cool ones, but the ones that I wanted, most of them, once again, most of them were square drills. And I'm like, you know what? No, I'm just not going to do that. Um, you know, and I will do square drills occasionally. But my preference is if I'm going to spend, you know, 80 to $110 for a canvas, which is a rare thing for me to do because even when I can do it, it makes me mad. Um, I usually won't. I mean, because <laughs> I want to enjoy the canvas from the unboxing to the putting the drills down to the finished product to, you know, sealing it if I have to. I want to enjoy the whole process. And I know when I do square drills, I mean, I can do them. It's fine. But it detracts from the experience for me because I'm a round drills girl. So... That's where we are with that. But they do have some pretty interesting ones. So, and be on the lookout for sales. I mean, you know, sometimes just randomly in the middle of the week, you know, Diamond Art Club will just run run a sale. Like the other day when I did the unboxing for the small ones that I bought, the um, Cookie Monster and Oscar the Grouch and Chip. Um you know, that was just random where in the middle of the week they sent an email going, hey, it's a buy two, get one free sale. Now, if I had premium canvases over there that I was just dying to get, that would have been outstanding. Like, I would have loved that kind of a sale. But, you know, I had a purpose in mind, so being able to find the little ones was still great because I am going to do those for my friend too to show and sell at her craft at her craft fair. So, in fact, she and her husband, uh, she lives in Georgia, and she and her husband went to um, a county fair in a county that's close by them, and she wanted to go, get, you know, look around the craft fair to not only purchase some stuff, but, you know, to get some ideas for stuff that she might be able to make and put on her list of things to sell as well. So, um so yeah so i'm anxious to hear i'm supposed to talk to her later today or tomorrow i'm anxious to hear how her day went and what she discovered she did send me a couple of pictures uh, while she was there going do you want one of these i'll put it in your next package i'm mailing to you heck yeah send it to me girl um i usually because we're you know she's it's kind of funny um, when I was doing Stampin' Up, which I did for um, five or six years, mostly to support my stamp habit. I mean, it wasn't like I wasn't making money that much, but I was getting my stuff at a reduced rate so I could afford it, which was great. Um, she was, um, I mean, we had been, we had been friends, you know, since before that, but she was, had never stamped before. So she was basically one of my students and then became one of my best customers <laughs> as well as one of my good friends. <clears throat> and um, and now I'm so proud of her. Now she's selling at craft fairs on her own. And, you know, periodically, uh, she's a CNA, so, you know, she's she works way too much. Um, you know, she'll say, okay, there's one coming up on such and such a date. Can you make some stuff for me to add to my stuff? Because I'm only going to have time this time for, you know, X amount of cards to be made. And, and she doesn't like to not have any inventory because, um, I mean, she always has order forms. You can always place an order and that's fine. And people have done that, but you know, people like to be able to give their money and take home whatever it is they want at the time. So it does impact her sales if she doesn't have enough inventory to show them that they can purchase. 
So, and inevitably I'll go, yeah, girl, I got a couple hours. I'll, you know, make you some, what do you want? You want holiday cards? You want sympathy cards? You want get well? Do you want birthday? Do you want, you know, general occasion? Like what, what do you want me to do? Where, where are you falling short? And I will see what I can do to fill in the blank. And so, um, that's what happens. So, uh, I like it when she goes to some others because then it's fun to see, oh, what's the latest trend? What are people, what are people making this time? What is, you know, what does it look like we're, we're going to be doing the most and, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, it'll be fun to hear what's happening over there. But yeah, I know I'm jumping around a little bit. Seriously, if you need a light pad or you need a new light pad, now is the time because the one that's $12 is usually $22. So, you know get it on sale okay um i would say go take a look i don't know how long the sale is on amazon never says it's just it is and then it's not <clears throat> so <coughs> shinny on over there and take a look if you're interested and in the market for a light pad or if you know somebody that could use one as a gift or whatever I do recommend that even if you don't have any trouble seeing the symbols and, and the drill fields on the canvases, I do recommend that you get a light pad just because <sighs> diamond paintings are a lot on your eyes. I mean, it's you have to really focus. You're going to be doing them usually for hours, and you need to not have your eyes be fatigued. And please take it from someone whose eyes are over a half a century old. Give yourself a break. Light your canvas up from behind it so that you don't have to struggle to see what it is you're trying to put down. I mean, really, your eyes will thank you 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Um, and, you know, for 12 bucks, you can get one if you just hate it. You know, you'll be able to unload it on somebody. You could even de-stash it for that price. So, you know... Get over there if you need one and check out the different diamond paintings they have right now that are in packs or that are on sale, that are on clearance. I like going to the clearance section anytime I'm trying not to pay shipping because I'm usually, you know, if I, if I don't make it, I'm, you know, two or three dollars short. And I'm like, oh, come on. I don't want to have to buy something for ten bucks when I'm only two or three dollars short. So then I go to, you know, diamond painting kits clearance. And, you know, you can find one for $2.99, $3.99, $4.99. And those rotate, too, because why they're on clearance depends on several factors. Maybe it's, you know, they only have a few left. Maybe it's, you know, the company that sent them said, God, get those out of your inventory, whatever it is. So, worthwhile to do. And, um, and the nice thing, too, is... If you just put in diamond painting kits, you can put in the price point. You can say under, you know, $6.99, under $5.99, under $4.99, and under $3.99. I think there's even an under $2.99, but I usually don't go for that one. So you literally can specify to your heart's content what it is you're looking for. So I think they should just call the section, you know, avoid shipping section, because that's basically... <laughs> I think why a lot of us go into that section is, you know, we're not usually looking for a $2.99 or a $3.99 canvas, but, you know, instead of paying $12 or $15 shipping, we'll go, yeah, okay, I'll buy that one for $3.99. Um, so it's worth doing. I mean, there's nothing, you don't get charged to look at them. So, you know, it doesn't hurt anything. Put them in, put them in there and See what comes up. See what you like and don't like. Scroll down. See what's going on. You might find a treasure. You don't know. You never know. You could. So, yeah, that's my recommendation is go over there and check it out. Um, what else is happening? What are you guys all up to? You, anybody have anything special coming up? My new grandbaby is headed to a month old. <clears throat> and oh is she cute as a bug's ear my god she's adorable and I'm telling you it's just nothing cuter in the world than a new baby 
How about you guys? How's everybody else doing? What's this week going to look like for you? Is it shaping up to be something good? Is there something coming up you're not really thrilled about? What is happening? I also, you guys, I have got 498 subs. Guys, two more to equal 500. Please, somebody subscribe. Come on, you can do it. Um, doesn't cost a thing. You don't have to watch every video that comes up. Like, seriously. Um, I want to say thank you so much to my new subs. Starlight, Star Bright. It's been so nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Um, I know there have been about a half a dozen or so of you as of late. And I'm sorry I don't have all of your names um, available. But thank you so much for subbing in. I really appreciate it. I hope that you enjoy the content. If you have suggestions on things you would like to see, don't hesitate to let me know. My email will be in the description area. Um, you can also leave a comment anytime. That's a good way to get my attention that there's something you want to tell me. Um, and for those of you who keep coming back and left all those wonderful messages of support, uh, you know what? Thank you so much. I really, I can't even tell you guys how much that meant during a really awful time. You guys are awesome, every single one of you. I just, uh, I just adore you. And I love this community because I love the support that everybody has for everyone else. I mean, seriously, I'm almost at 500 subs. I've only had two trolls, that's it. And I just, you know, and I always brag on you guys. I always say, you know what, I have the best subs around. You might think you do, but I do. I have the best subs. So, um, that's, you know, kind of what's happening. But guys, I really want to get over that 500 number because <sighs> apparently you have to have enough subs for some of these companies to send a, um, a PR package. I don't know. They have to feel like they're getting their money's worth or whatever. That you, you have enough people that, you know, they're potential for getting business. So... Okay, and I'm going to start letting them know. I'm going to send them an intro email once I hit 500 because what the heck, you know? Um, I'm seeing a lot of people that are getting them that are not even at that level, and they're still getting it. So I don't know. We'll see. And uh, so I'm going to put the word out there that, you know, hey, hi. Yeah, you have, uh, you know, PR packages that, you know, you'd like to have 500 more people take a look at, keep me in mind, and then let them know. But I'm only going to do it once, so they'll either do it or they won't, and then I'll know that for whatever reason, this is not the channel they like. Okay, that's fine too. No problemo. But I'm going to have to start, and that's why I'm asking you guys, um what kind of other content would you like to see? I mean, besides the unboxings, the whip and chats, the completions, the, you know, the sales located here, there, and everywhere. Like, what else? What else is interesting to you? Um, I know a lot of people are putting other things out on their channel. I mean, Mrs. Coffee, for instance, is doing her video game playing on Twitch on her YouTube channel. I, I, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, but, um, and I have shown you guys my dragons. So, so you know that I do have my reptiles, you know, I have my chihuahua and my other two dogs. Um, so, you know, you tell me what else you would like to see here and I will take any suggestion under advisement. Um, I mean, I could think of some things, but I'm more interested in what you guys would like to see because I don't, you know, just want to go with what I think would make good content. And then you guys are sitting there going, oh, my God, what is she doing that for? You know what I mean? So you let me know what you would like to see um, at the 500 mark, which, again, is going to be in a couple of subs. Um, I'm going to be doing a little contest for you guys. Um, and I'm going to give the, the first two people, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you in a quick scan, I'm not going to give you long enough to count, but I'm going to give you a quick scan of 
the diamond paintings in my stash, just in their tote bags, which is what most of them are in, and plus the premium canvases. And then I'm gonna ask you to guess how many diamond paintings I have in my stash. The two people that get the closest are going to get a little surprise, a little giveaway from me. So, that's coming. Um, I'm not gonna be putting, you know, giveaway video in the title because that tends to bring the trolls out and I, I don't wanna do that. So, um, you know, you'll have to just be watching videos like you are now so that when the time comes, um, I'll probably put something in the title like peep my stash or something. And so, you know, we can, you'll know that that's where the information is going to be and where I'm gonna show you the scan of my diamond paintings. And then we will, oh, thank goodness, I finished that section, woohoo. And then um, somebody is going to win a little prize for me. A couple of people are. So that's coming too. But other than that, Oh, also as a part of the 500 celebration, I'm taking a Q&A. So if you have any questions that you would like to know about me, about my diamond painting journey, about my animals, you know, about life in general, um, you know, put them in the comments and I will do a answer of those things um, at the time that I announce who is going to win the count for how many diamond paintings I have who got the closest. So... Um, yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do, you guys. Oh, that feels good to have that done. So now I have four or five panels done. Do this one, and then the next row, and I think that's a quarter of the way. <laughs> like I said, this is going to be multiple, multiple months, and that's okay. Um, so how long have I been talking at you guys? An hour and 12 minutes. Okay. So, I hope whatever you're doing today, you're having a very nice time. I hope your weather is better than ours. I'm so sick of this rain and, you know, I'm just watching my roof sink lower and lower and lower. I'm telling you guys, it's going to be bad real soon. Um, <clears throat> so, I hope everybody is doing great. Now, you're anticipating a good weekend. Um, if you're anticipating a stressful weekend... Please do some self-care that um, makes you happy. I don't care if it's you're going to treat yourself to Starbucks three days this week or you're going to go out and get your favorite munchie or you're going to put your feet up or you're going to take a half a day off or you're going to call and say, whatever it is you're going to do, do it. I'm giving you permission and instruction to take care of yourselves. I really appreciate each and every one of you more than you know. And always, always be a dragon. Spread your wings. Protect those you love. A fiery passion. Stay strong, slay your fears, and always fly high, rise up, and soar. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Love to each and every one of you. Have a wonderful start to your week, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Good morning, Miss Clara. Hello, sweetheart. How are you doing today? Are you ready to eat? I know, I think so. Look how beautiful you are, young lady. Yep, you are so pretty. Hi. Look at you getting all ready to shed. Look at you, Miss Beautiful. That's a very good sign. Shedding means that she is growing and ready for new skin. So that's good. Um, when I weighed her the other day, we've discovered that she is 23 grams heavier. And I bet you if I weighed her right now, she'd be heavier yet because, oh, this girl leaps and bounds really and truly so my little sweet one are you ready to have something to eat yes she plows 
through. And I mean, she plows through her meals. So, which is good because that's what she's supposed to do. Um, so she made it five days and she didn't have a single seizure. And then yesterday, as I was getting ready to leave, I noticed that she had uh, a real brief, real, real brief one, but a seizure nonetheless. So she recovered okay. You can see she's watching me because I have stuff on top of her enclosure. <laughs> she's so funny. Um, and, you know, she's doing fine, but I had really hoped that, you know, we might get away with not having any more, but apparently we're not quite finished yet with seizures, so that's okay. We will just keep trudging right along. Won't we, Miss Clara? Mealworm this morning, would you like one? Yum, 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 yum. Yum, yum. Come on, baby, you can do it here. You want it right here? That's a good girl. So, yeah, she's really something, this girl. You're gonna have lots of little worms that are shed my, now, my sweet girl, which will be great, because then you get all the chewy goodness without the crunch, right? No exoskeletons yet. You go right ahead and you plow over there and eat them. You are a good girl. Yes, you are. You are a very good girl. Yes, you are. Um, as you can see, you do not have to force her to eat uh, at any time. She is perfectly happy to consume 100% of what you put in her dish. Um, so, yeah, we're just going along, but she is, she's, she's growing beautifully. Um, I would dare to say that there's some thriving happening with this little girl. There you go, baby. Um, and she's getting better about people's hands, although they're still not her favorite thing. I hope that doesn't stay that way because I would like her to be comfortable being held like all the others are. So I'm just going to continue to work with her and let her know that she doesn't need to be afraid of human hands, that it's really okay, and that she knows that she's loved, and that, um, you know, life is okay, and it's okay to be happy to be held. Um, she was really precious. I gave her a bath the other day, and she, she just wanted me to hold up her her top half, which was fine. I didn't need to. What the water was not deep. She, she easily. Oops. She easily. Oops. Sorry, guys. She easily could stand up in the water, so it wasn't like you know she was not in danger of drowning by any means. However, plus I was sitting right there with her, but she 100% wanted to lay in my hand, and so she did. And she let me wash her with the other hand. So yeah. So, she's adorable. You can see that shed on her head right there, right there above her eye. It's coming off and getting ready to. Um, so, yep, yeah, I'm just going to let it do its thing and let it come off at its own, at its own pace. And, um, yeah, then we won't have to worry about it. And I'm hoping that she's getting regular baths, that she's, not going to have any stuff shed because that I would have to help her with and I don't think she's ready for that for me to help her with that yet without being scared and I don't want her to be scared so that's kind of where we are with that but yeah she's one good little girl yes you can have some a few wax worms because you're a good girl and I have a hornworm for you should you decide that you have room yet and you want to continue to have some. I do I have room, I have lots of these for you. So, but yes, she is coming along beautifully. Could not ask for better. And she's so sweet and she's very goofy. But you can see that um, with all the seizures and everything, it has not affected her vision. She's got great vision. 
she can hone in on her prey very easily and she's deadly accurate so she's every bit the she dragon that we hoped she would be so yeah we'll just see what we can do about trying to minimize her neural activity um, also the larger she's getting the less tremor she's having so I'm really thankful for that too I don't know why but I don't care I'll take it I'm just happy that that's what's going on in her life yes sorry sweetie that was on me I dropped it so yes she is just a beautiful happy girl and growing like a little weed she's part horse part dragon I think because boy can she eat so yes she is doing phenomenally well and since it's Sunday and I try to give everybody a hornworm on Sunday I do have a couple that I think are small enough for her so I'm going to attempt to give her one I expect her to be happy about it because they all love these I don't know what it is about them but they do Okay, hang on a second. I know you see them too, don't you? I know you do. I know. I'm fighting with the lid, Clara. I'm sorry, baby. <sighs> I don't want to fight with the lid. It just happens to be what's going on. I swear, either these lids don't fit at all or they're so tight. Whoops. They're so tight, you cannot get them off. It doesn't seem to be any other way. So, almost there, Claire. Hang on, baby. I know. I know, sweetheart. I'm sorry. Okay. Lid is free. Now I have to go and pick up, pick up the tongs, which I dropped while I was trying to get the lid off of the thing. Okay. I think we're all back in order, more or less. Whew. Okay. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's an ordeal through no fault of their own, just because, because it is for the rest of us. All right. Well, that one's kind of big. Let me look over here. Okay. So... All right, here's a tiny one. Look, Miss Claire. Yeah, that was tasty, yeah? All right, there's a couple here that... They're kind of a little bit big for you. But I think you might be okay with them because you're a pretty good chewer. And I think if you chew them, we'll be okay. So we'll try one and see. If it doesn't work out, then you know we won't we won't go that route again. But let's hope so. It's a little bit bigger, baby. You didn't care one iota. Well, I'd say you made short work of that, didn't you? Yeah. All right. Well, here's one more you can have that's that size. Good job, baby. Nice thing about hornworms not having an exoskeleton is that they don't have to try to break it down. It doesn't. We don't have to worry about it getting impacted. Like there's none of none of those traumas that go with hornworms that go with other types of worms. So, um, you know, she's she's handling it fine. It's not like, you know, oh my gosh, we're not going to be able to to go that route. Oh, are you finished? All right, good job, little Miss Lady. Good job, sweet Clara. Yes, you're doing so nicely. Yeah, can we do a bath later so we can get a little water on you and help with that shed a little bit. Although it's coming off just fine and it's not stuck. It's just coming off in its own good time, huh? You're a good girl, Claire. Yes, you are. You're so beautiful. I'm glad you're finally full because that was an awful lot for you. Yep, I see you've had a little love poop over there. So I will clean the poop and then we will get you going. 
because you are becoming quite the beautiful she dragon. So I'm excited to see this shed. Um, she's old enough now where I think we're going to get a pretty good look of what shade she's going to be as an adult. And I'm going to say she looks like she's going to head toward the reds, which is okay. The red in her little mask is so cute. You can see it running there along the side of her face. That's a beautiful shade of red. And then on her tail, which hasn't shed yet, you can see the, the line of demarcation right there at the, at the base of her tail. So the whole, her whole back is going to shed and her head. Um, so I imagine her, um, oh, and her front biceps are gonna shed as well. But maybe her back legs and her tail will shed later or maybe in the next one. So, yes, Miss Clara, I'm talking about your beautiful self. I am. But yeah, you can see she has rounded right out. She is longer. She's definitely getting wider. And she's coming along beautifully. You can see her breathing, see under her arms. Yeah, that's where you always look to see if a dragon, how they're breathing because their lungs are located right under there. And so um, that is where you can tell if their breathing is right under their arms. Yep. So, but yeah, she's just doing beautifully. and We're very pleased with her. Yep doing great yeah now she's had she's had her breakfast when we do lunch later we will do her weekly um, supplements which will be her multivitamin she gets calcium with every meal but on weekends she also gets her multivitamin and her probiotic and um, her calcium with d3 so Yep, that's how come she's becoming this stunning, stunning portrait of beautiful young Miss Dragonhood you see before you. Yes, she's on her way to being a beautiful she dragon. Yes, she is. You are a good girl, Miss Claire. I will see you at lunchtime, okay? All right. All right, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.